you know, season three will bring back a lot of the familiar faces. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Riker back in the captain's chair, rocking around, doing his thing, and especially doing his signature maneuver, the Riker maneuver, hopping over those chairs. I'm going to try to do the Riker maneuver. Here we go. Oh, yes, I did it. Hey everyone, it's Ryan back again for Son of N. Well, sorry to say, but it has been a while since my last video. Life just gets in the way. But here we are, and we're back to another season of Star Trek Picard, the third season, in fact, and may very well be the last. Uh, I think it's been said to be the last, but then there's been talk of, well, maybe they'll keep going, but I don't know. You know, the second season, if you were like me, I didn't find it as good. And, uh, you know, it was cool. We had time travel. We had the Borg Queen, which unfortunately I just saw recently that the actress who played the Borg Queen in season two recently passed away. Annie Wershing, she, uh, she did a great job as the Borg Queen. In fact, I wasn't even sure it was a different actress at first. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately that's sad news. Anyway, uh, you know, season one was a bit better. Um, you know, we had androids, we had Data, we had maybe the final death of Data. It is getting harder and harder for Brent Spiner to play a role as if he never ages when he himself is also aging, but here we are. In season one, we were reintroduced to Chateau Picard, which if you saw my blog post from back a couple years ago, you will see that it was actually Sunstone Winery up in the San Inez Valley that doubled as Chateau Picard. So it's fairly close by. So I was able to take the family there and try some of their wines. And ultimately for my blog post, I included a wine from Sunstone with the first season's version of the Chateau Picard wine, which was a, uh, in their world, a Chateau Picard 2386. Now, the version of, uh, of Chateau Picard in Star Trek is located in La Bar, France. There's actually two La Bars in France, which strangely enough, neither is actually in Bordeaux, which is where the real Chateau Picard, which has no relation to the character, is located. Uh, it's actually a left bank winery and it has been around for a long time. And I included also a wine from it, the real uh, Chateau Picard, that I picked up at my lo local winery um, that year as well. Um, the Chateau Picard for the, for the show is actually also coming from the real Chateau Picard. It's a special one that they're bottling and labeling as if it's coming from the future. For the, the, the second season, they, at the very beginning of the first episode, you actually see Captain Picard in his vineyards as uh, harvest is happening. And it's a very strange yet cool sequence for me and maybe others who are familiar with the wine industry because uh, you see him as they picking the grapes and they're more or less just beaming the grapes and then uh, using machines to smash them up and then beaming the liquid into the bottles and then like super laser printing the labels on them and it just seems rather strange. I don't know, it's you know modern technology and their future per se, but I feel like naturalists may not like that because ultimately it screws up the process when you need to age these wines in barrels for several years before they actually get bottled. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a cool sequence to see, but at the same time, it was a bit of a head scratcher if you actually know how, how wine is made and how it is bottled and etc. But anyway, during season two, that first episode, they do have these wines here, which are uh, these cool metal labels. And as soon as I saw that episode, I was like, ooh, I'm gonna have to get one of these whenever it's available. And in fact, these bottles are $10 more, these are $70 a bottle versus the ones previously, which were at the time labeled as $60 a bottle. Uh, I'm guessing due to the metal label is um, where it is, plus inflation <laughs> in our modern world. It's a big word these days. They've actually released another bottle uh, that is labeled as uh, 2,221, and it is for a 
partner series called Star Trek A Strange New World, which uh, deals with Captain Pike. If you watch the Discovery series at all, it is the same Captain Pike and much of his crew from that show. And um, I'm guessing it's something like he's uh, serving dinner to a bunch of people and he pulls out a bottle of Chateau Picard. But, you know, that show is in the past. So obviously none of the characters we know are even alive back then. But it's just a little nod, you know, to Chateau Picard, Picard himself, and obviously a way to sell more merchandise because uh, that bottle is $60. It more or less looks like they're just calling it version two of the Chateau Picard that I had back from season one. I'm guessing it's this, just this same latest vintage 2019. It's just that they're labeling it with the, the Strange New World information, you know, 2,221, rather than, you know, just making another bottle of Chateau Picard from the modern version of his show. So now we're at season three and they have released this wine. It is a 2019 version of basically the same wine at 85% cab, 15% Merlot. It has a very rich, high amount of tannins, uh, medium to medium high amounts of acids, lots of deep, dark berries to it, a little bit of oak, but all in all a solid wine that they themselves say could age for quite a while. Really interesting this time around, it came with this rubber um, cover, stopper, whatever you wanna call it, that uh, you basically just pull off and then you, actually, you remove the cork. We've got season three coming soon. It is bringing back all the stars from the original series. Uh, I, I guess I could, should say the original Next Generation series to not get people confused with the original series. But uh, everybody's coming back, Brent Spiner included. Uh, not exactly sure what his role will be considering Data is still supposed to be dead from season one. So we shall see how it goes. But I'm enjoying this wine. It is a solid, solid, solid wine. In fact, as, as the back of the bottle says, they say a vintner's history is in every glass. The soil he came from, his past, hopes for the future. So, to the future. To the future, everyone. May you live long and prosper. Uh, yeah, something like that. Cheers. Oh man, I think I'm starting to get a headache. Oh, make it so, number one. Make it so. I think I need more wine.